Good morning. Welcome to Life Ma or <laughs> Morning Oasis. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was just in the middle of setting up Life Masteries uh, group discussion tonight. Okay, so give me just a moment to get the music playing. I um I spent the morning playing my guitar, which was really nice. I love it when I get some morning time to do that. It's been kind of busy around here. Um, <clears throat> all right, you guys let me know if that's a good volume or not. Good morning, Jolene. Good morning. So we, let's see, we'll start by saying we have all three card slots open for today. We'll do card pulls the normal way today, and then I will tell you guys what we're going to be talking about. Today is going to be kind of interactive and tomorrow um well we'll we'll see how today goes and we'll decide if we're gonna do that tomorrow or not um <clears throat> I wanted to start off by saying our morning announcements so first of all tonight is our first discussion group for life mastery part one um it is for all of those students who are currently enrolled in the life Mar mastery program sure Jolene um <clears throat> And uh, what we're going to be doing is once a month on the last Tuesday of every month, we're going to have a two-hour discussion group to discuss that class, that particular class. So everybody's going to be, um, we're all, all going to come in together into a group classroom, which is the Zoom classroom where I record and host all of my classes um, and sessions as well. And we're going to take the time to really talk about, you know, what are the challenges of integrating this? How's the, what's the best approach to um, integrating life mastery uh, skills and lessons that you're learning? Um, what are your struggles with talking with your compass and using that tool? Um, and that kind of is going to tie in a little bit with what we're going to talk about today just in, the, in Morning Oasis as well. Uh, so the only other announcement is this Saturday is lunch with Jesse. There's still tickets available. Um, I reorganized my entire dining room yesterday. It looks so different. So I'm excited to uh, entertain in the new space. And um, is there something else? Uh, oh, I posted the next um, dinner with Jesse and we're going to do that at Isan again, just because I don't want to have to think about it quite yet. That's a really busy time for me. Um, we'll be traveling. And then again, in um, early August, there'll be some time a week with no morning oasis. That's all the announcements. So we have two more card slots available. Jolene, what wants to talk with you? I wanted to show you guys really quickly. I have two of my decks are kind of out of commission today um, because uh, I, I don't know if you've ever gone to a fair with me or worked with me uh, with, for uh, reading. Uh, most people come to me um, for readings at fairs. But what I've done today, uh, well, actually, it's over the last couple days, is when I, when I do a card pull reading for myself, what I do is I um, put the stones on it. So I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. So, for instance, this is actually a Celtic cross reading that's been condensed down, um, and it's a reading that uh, is for me, so I have some lavender rose quartz on it and some apophyllite to help integrate all of that, um, and this is stuff you guys can do at home. This is the same kind of spread, but it's all spread out, as you can see, um, and it's another way of supporting. So, when you're doing cr um, readings for yourself, when you're doing them at home, this is something that you can do. Use the, get your stones working for you. Uh, use them to help support. Now, I use guidance on what to put where and how to support it. But this is just like um, if you were going to be doing crystal healing on the body. It's the same concept with, uh, with the tarot. Because what happens is <clears throat> each of these cards, as we do these readings, what you guys notice, I just pull one card out and it pulls up all of this stuff for you, right? Pulls all of these thoughts and these feelings and these emotions all come up to the surface for you. And you feel 
like um, you, you're able to process through and think through and, and look at the self in a different way. Well, when you use stones on the cards, these the, you're putting that vibrational support on that aspect of the self, that aspect of the consciousness, that part of the bodies as well, the uh, emotional and the energetic bodies and mental bodies as well as the physical bodies. We store everything in our body. In our physical vessel, that's where we store things. It's like a great big storage unit. So when we put the crystals on the cards like this, that makes it so that we're actually targeting an aspect of the self that how do you put a stone on a belief system or on a pattern of behavior? Good morning, Ashley. So that's why I do this. And for me, I use guidance on how long to leave it out. Um, the first time I did this, it was because I was doing a reading for my te my former teacher and she asked, why is it that I'm struggling so much in business and not being able to attract new clients? And, you know, there were a lot of reasons for that. <clears throat> and I, you know, I use cards a lot in those situations where I'm like, well, I know I can't tell you, but let's see if the cards want to tell you. Because if they want to tell you, then then it's then it's fair game, and that's what we're talking about. And it's not me bringing it up; it's you. <laughs> so good morning. I already said good morning, Ashley. I think, but if I didn't, good morning. Um, so anyway, I uh, did a card reading for her, and I put stones out on it. It just felt like I needed to. And I left it out for 24 hours. That was what I felt guided to do. And she called me the next morning uh, to see if I had done the reading. And, um, and I said, I did. And she goes, well, I had four new students sign up yesterday from the time that I asked you to do that reading until now. And so I think we need to talk about what that reading said. <laughs> um, and I have found for myself it, it helps so much to integrate the information that I'm, I'm receiving from this oracleship, from these cards. So um, <clears throat> when you are reading for yourself at home, just try it out. Play around with it. See if you like it. See how it feels. Uh, we have two more card slots open. Um, Jolene, you're being called by the Shadowscape Tarot deck, which is my favorite tarot deck. Oh, that's so interesting. A little piece of paper just fell out of my tarot deck, and there should be no paper there. Last night, while I'm, I'm shuffling these, I'll just tell you guys, um, I went to, <clears throat> uh, if you're familiar with Nako Bear and Medicine for the People, uh, he's a, a good friend of mine, and um, he's dating one of my good, very close friends and students. Um, and so he was in town. They're on tour right now. Uh, they were in town last night, and um, they had he's he's really championing a um, effort for returning the wild salmon, salmon, the native wild salmon, to Northern California, a tribal species, and they're there It's an effort that's both um, government as well as tribally funded and. Um, organized and all of that and so apparently way back when I think it was in the early 1900s the um, American government shipped salmon genetics the eggs the DNA um, linking back into that that specific run uh, all around the world in an attempt to because salmon was so yummy and delicious and it was a new world food they wanted to you spread salmon out. They're like, salmon should be able to live anywhere. They go in the ocean, right? But they come back to these particular places. Yes, Sue, I can put you down. I've got one more slot. So um, uh, one more slot after Sue. So if anybody else would like a card pull, there's one more. So anyway, uh, they it's costing a lot of money because um, the only place that the salmon from Northern California survived was in New Zealand. So in New Zealand, there are still running, yes, Ashley, I can totally pull for you. There are still salmon that are running there that have genetics linking back. So what they are <clears throat> proposing to do um, is to test all of the genetics of the eggs they harvest from those rivers in New Zealand where these salmon are running and bring them back and have those eggs uh, gestate here uh, in Northern California in their native beds, um, hoping that then when they 
go out and then come back and I think it's something like six to seven years or four years I can't remember exactly I think each species might also have a different or each whatever anyway so um, last night they had a documentary that's talking about all of this and it's a fundraiser they only have three days left in their fundraising efforts to connect collect enough money to be able to harvest this year's run, which is going to be coming in a few months. And over there, I think it might even be on a different timeline. I'm not sure because they're Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, so it would be as we approach summer, this is as their, their, heart, their runs are happening probably now. Anyway, so they're running out of time to get money enough to be able to harvest these eggs. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, it is on Nako Bear. Uh, I think he has a public page, Nako Bear Medicine for the People. I know in the HP group I posted about the fundraising event, uh, but there's a GoFundMe campaign that you can totally check out right in there. And um, I think it's great. I would love to see our salmon come back. They also are doing efforts like routing, creating a route around the... Um, the dam and all sorts of things. Andrea and Wendy, I can put you down tomorrow because we got um, we got a full upload today. Let me write that down. I've been really bad about writing things down lately. <laughs> it was it was bad. I realized also all week I yesterday last week I haven't posted any of the videos on Facebook or on YouTube. So if you're looking for them there, mm, I'll get to it. I promise. Okay, Jolene, Shadowscapes wants to talk to you. Oh, Jolene, you got the fool. Let's see if we can get her in there. There we go. Now, this is my favorite card in the deck, actually. The reason it's my favorite card is because when she comes out, when the fool comes out to play, it means that you have completed something and you're now dropping into something completely new. Everything that's around you right now is going to be out of context for what you knew before. And it's time to start shedding off the belief systems that you've carried up until this point. Because moving forward, you, they don't apply. You're in a whole new kind of area right now of your life. You're in a whole new learning sphere. So now is the time to let yourself embrace being the fool, right? Do things that you wouldn't normally do. Um, say yes when you might normally say no. Um, be willing to try and explore. Uh, she's completely protected. See, she's on this precipice on her very tippy toes and has no fear. She's not looking at where her feet will land. She's looking at where she's going. She's, she's taking a greater view, a higher perspective fully held and supported by the divine. The fox is at her feet, imp implying that she has an innate wisdom, an ability to flow through things without tripping and stumbling. You know, when you watch a fox run through the forest, it's like watching moving water. You know, it's amazing. So um, know that you're divinely protected and guided in all ways. And let's see. Oh, maybe just the shadowscapes want to talk today because... Sue, they want to talk to you too. Mm. Sue, it's time to really start looking at and thinking about what does the fox say? <laughs> I almost went into that, but I won't. I promise I won't. So Sue, it's time for you to start thinking about community, your community, looking at who are the close people around you, really taking stock of this. Um, the cups suit is also the undercurrent, like the unconscious emotions, the undercurrent emotions. So um, they're subconscious and, and belief patterns that are um, impacting the way you feel about things. Morning, Shauna. Uh, so it makes it so that um, the, anything in the suit of cups is going to be how we feel in response to things. So maybe looking at how you're feeling about your community, how you're thinking about your community. Um, I'm getting it's time for you to do some transition. Yeah, some transitioning in your community a little bit. Make, a, make some different choices in who you're allowing to come super close in to this tight inner circle because what, what we surround ourselves with is really what we are um, mirroring of who we are and where we are at this moment in time. It's not about like rejecting somebody or, um, or, or, or 
like judging someone as being bad or not worthy of being close to you or being too needy or any of those things. Cause I know Sue that you tend to have a lot of people around you that, that need from you. Uh, this is more about making sure that the close inner sanctum is a, ref a true reflection of where you, you yourself are at in your growth and development. Um, and I have um, amazing, amazing circle of people and who are really close to me is always shifting at different points. And it's not because of a rejection. It's not because of a judgment, but it's because as I shift and change, I need different mirrors to reflect things for me. And then they come back because I need some other different part of them. We're all in this growth together. So checking in to see what that community of mirrors, that's your community of mirrors, really is and being more conscious about the choices that you that ha, of how you put those those pieces together uh, I think that will really start to support you in your growth you're at this kind of point right now where you're really expanding conscious consciousness wise and if the community around you isn't an allowance for that expansion it's kind of like if you have, if you, let's say you've got a, a blowing machine and you put a balloon on it, well, you're going to hit a limitation point of that balloon's limitation. And you're kind of hitting the limitation point of your community with your expansion. So some of the people are going to be like, I'm sorry, what? I don't understand you. <laughs> and you'll want to bring it down. And that's important too. That's a different process. That is a completely different process than your your reflection process, your community, pro your tight inner circle. So I'm not saying isolate or cut yourself off from that community at all, because we must serve as bridgers between what was and what is and what will be, right? So it's not to say to cut people out, but just be conscious of your mirrors. Is this actually a mirror for where I'm at now? Or am I being shown a reflection of where I was so I can value more where I'm at? right because it's always going to be in some way a gift for you um that's all I'm getting off that <laughs> and let's see Jolene said I've been I've been cleaning out the unwanted things in my life moving forward that's awesome I think that must be in the air god I threw three bags of garbage out yesterday two bags of fabric scraps I mean little tiny scraps why was I keeping those what am I planning on doing with little tiny scraps of fabric I don't quilt I don't build scrappy things. <laughs> mm. Ashley, the Shadowscapes does not want to talk to you. It's somebody else. Ah, Ganesh. <clears throat> Big changes in the air, guys. So much energy shifting and changing. That's why we're going to be talking about what we're going to be talking about today. I'm kind of excited for today, actually. I was sitting there going, I didn't have a focus yesterday. That felt very strange. Uh, instead, you guys kind of got a window into me. Um, and uh, and I was like, what is it that we really need right now? What am I noticing that's lacking? And boom, out came the answer. You see, when we ask the question, ask and ye shall receive. It's pretty cool. All right. Um... Interesting. <clears throat> so we're reading out of the Whispers of the Lord Ganesh by Angela Hartfield. I'm just going to look up the card real quick. So I'm pretty fumbling today. When I was trying to practice my guitar earlier, I normally, even playing songs that are easy, it's like I was stumbling through chord changes. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, you lost the connection for a bit. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if that was you or me. I I can't tell. It doesn't show me any of that. Okay, so this is for Ashley and all of us. Um, you got innocence. Card number 43. The simple gestures of love and respect can prevail over even the toughest of hearts. In this card, the lightness of the aura around Ganesh portrays innocence being soft and still you gave the universe the opportunity to assist you in creating your desires be willing to release any cynicism have you noticed yourself becoming increasingly critical over time as you gather more experience sometimes the familiarity of a situation can cause you to lose touch with your innocence 
This is linking back, by the way, to the Fool card. Just saying. <clears throat> it is only natural to expect similar outcomes as you have had in the past when similar situations present themselves in your life. Don't forget, though, that change and transformation are always possible. You're being offered an opportunity to approach this situation with renewed peace. If you're making changes in your job situation, relationships, or even the direction of your life path, approach this with a sense of exploration and the excited curiosity of a child. Be willing to let go of the preconceived ideas that have developed over time in your mind. Allow your heart to be centered and in a place of peace. Every day, call on Ganesh for guidance to renew your mind and refresh your thinking. While Ganesh's assistance, uh, with Ganesh's assistance, contemplate each situation that you encounter. Ask Ganesh to support you. Remember to pray for freedom from fears, worries, and unhealthy obsessions that might control your thoughts and harm your soul. Be accountable for your decisions and their results. Just knowing that you're responsible will assist you it, to take the decision seriously and with greater consideration. So this is, this is really big right now for all of us, this innocence, bringing this innocence in. We have to allow ourselves to be flawed and allow ourselves to shift the way that we're looking at and interpreting the information that's coming in. And this is the perfect, perfect frequency to shift into what I wanted to talk about today. So today what I wanted to cover with you guys is, um, is talking with your si higher self. Um, oftentimes when I'm talking with somebody, I'll keep referencing a they. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, on what's the biggest blessing this morning, on how that is the biggest. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So, um, so a lot of times I will be talking with somebody and they'll, they'll ask me, who is this they that you're referencing? Like, who is that? Uh, and I just had somebody ask me that recently. And so the they <laughs> to me is like, is, is, is a conglomeration of my highest of selves, my highest consciousness, the, the energetic team that surrounds and supports me. That's like, that's like my pit crew, right? Like th I think of myself as a race car driver, basically. I'm the consciousness that's inside this vehicle that had a whole team of people that created the vehicle and then a team of people that are maintaining the vehicle. And then there's the guidance crew, right? The navigation team, because this isn't like on a track that we're on. We're out in the real world testing this vehicle out, testing its limits, experiencing it to the full, traveling in this journey, right? And this vehicle, this vessel that I occupy isn't just mine. It isn't just my journey. And the more you connect in with the they for you, whoever the they may be, the more you will learn this and the more it will feel truer and truer and truer to you. So the they is really like the whole of who's, who it is that is here expressing. When you start channeling more consciously, you realize, oh, that's this aspect that's talking. Oh, that's that. And they still feel all like a part of your they. Uh, one psychic called it an entourage. It's your entourage. It's your team. Sometimes that some of them are going to be ancestors. Some of them are going to be archetypal characters, angelics. Some of them are going to be galactics, people, uh, consciousnesses that are also in other vessels there that are driving and they're radioing with you and they're out in, you know, some other planet doing some other vessel testing research, you know, they're, and, and yet you're still, you're all part of the team. So it's going to be different things and having discernment, having the ability to communicate, having the ability to receive, to listen, to share, all of that is critical when you start using this support team to help you navigate through your path. Because it's really like when we first come in, we're given a map as th via our experiences of our childhood that's going to kind of characterize the terrain that we navigate through. And, and then we kind of forget our map 
and we get lost in the recovery, right? In in the build, recovery of the building process. So now if you can get that map back by talking to the they for you, the higher consciousness, the the support team, if you can get that back, then you don't need to go all the time to psychics. I, I still go. I, I still get readings. I still go and get outside support because sometimes that I think my the they are way, way more like excited and they don't get some of the, the real world stuff. However, <laughs> usually it's me resisting and the psychic will tell me exactly what I'm hearing and plus a little more and then the slap in the ass that I need to get moving. So I'm not saying you don't entirely use each other still, that we're still critical for each other. But the most important is your connection with the they. So what I thought we would do is we'll start today right now with meditation. I want to do a download of an attunement, uh, an attunement and a download for you that hopefully will help you start hearing your they. Because my ultimate goal is to get everybody listening to themselves, hearing themselves, flowing this higher self-consciousness so that guidance through your day is effortless. Now, some of you already do this without even thinking, right? I mean, especially if you've been on this path for a long time or you took this life mastery last year, or that's your gift is that that's not blocked. You know, there's lots of different reasons. So for those of you who do not struggle with this, my dream would be that you would uh, project into this sphere of, of work that we're creating as we drop into this, um, your clarity, your clearness, your uh, ability to flow, just flow that in. And that will help create an environment of flow as well. So there, just ev even though you may not need this part of it, receive it anyway, because you never know what that shift, that subtle little shift can do to improve for you as well. So we'll just hold it all together. The rabbit's going crazy over there. Somebody's got something that needs to be dug out. <laughs> and then we'll talk more in just a little bit. I'm going to try not to knock over my stuff back there. Okay, so go ahead and get comfortable. Naughty rabbit. Can you guys hear that? I don't even know. I'm trying to decide if that's even too disruptive. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a moment. Breathing in this present moment. And releasing. Yeah, she's really distracting. I might just go take away her tunnel. One second. What a naughty rabbit she is today. We'll start that again. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and take a few moments. Let's just go ahead and check in with our body for this moment. Check in with your posture. Are you sitting or laying comfortably? <sighs> Does your body have any aches? Does it need you to adjust? Open up your chest, maybe? Open your shoulders? Get comfortable. For this meditation, I'd like for you guys to make sure your arms and legs are not crossed, that you're just really open, even open your palms, leaving your palms resting in whichever way they are, but open, receiving, okay? Start breathing as you breathe in this present moment. Feel the air, the temperature, and the smell. And release. Mm. 
Breathing in this present moment. Feeling that air as it passes through your nose into your throat and expands in your lungs. And releases. And breathe in, breathing all the way down into the belly. Really feeling the belly expand as your stomach relaxes and makes room for that lung cavity to open even more and release. Breathing in all the way into the root like you're breathing into your seat. We're all adjusting as we're coming into this common space as we imagine around us a giant sphere. The sphere of this oasis space that we are creating every morning together. Visualize yourself within this space as though it's a magical, sacred garden with waterfalls full of rainbow light. Big, tall trees growing along the banks of the flowing river. Rabbits gnawing on the tree. <laughs> this Inside this oasis is everything that you could ever possibly need. Just feel that space around you. In this moment, we're not entirely focused upon our grounding. Not that we're ungrounded, but we're allowing the grounding to be open and expansive because we're so much more than just this human expression. We're going to release ourselves in this moment, in this time and space from the cage of our vessel as we allow our consciousness to shift fully into that oasis. We're going to see that light of the sun of source shining down over the space on each of us. Feel that warmth as that light penetrates all through our consciousness. Just feel that for a moment. And I'm going to call in an attuning frequency, which is a strand of energy coming from that source. Imagine coming out of that sun is a filament, one tiny strand that is the exact perfect frequency for you. This is your truest frequency free of all programming, all karma, all conditioning. This is that pure essence of you coming from source. Imagine that strand is coming down through that light. See it coming to the top of your head. Feel that strand 
spiraling and arcing gracefully and effortlessly down through your energy field all the way for in this moment in time you even forget the names that you have gone by as you come back into this core frequency of self frequency as it meets your consciousness to expand into its full sound. Effortlessly and gracefully. As you are this point of consciousness here in this oasis, I want you to send a part of your consciousness to follow that strand, that filament, all the way back. Follow it with your consciousness as though you're tracing a line all the way back into source, into the heart, into the soul. Keep going until you're all the way in the heart of the sun, right in the center of that consciousness. See how there are filaments more than you could ever count all through, effortlessly and gracefully flowing within each other, tangling and untangling as the consciousnesses that are the collective intermingle. Let yourself feel this space for a moment. Breathe it in. If you feel like you need to move your body because it's feeling tense as you're releasing so much that identifies, don't even try to worry about what it is that's being released. Just move and adjust. Feel how things are wanting to move into a better alignment. More supportive of each other. Feel how the impact of experiencing these strands interconnecting and mingling is impacting you in this moment. Now notice how these strands also exist within greater bundles. Find your bundle of strands, your group that seem to all focus and tend to play more around one another. Let them be different colors, different feelings, different sounds, maybe they're different instruments, whatever. I want you to start just like you're sliding back down a line from a high point. I want you to effortlessly and gracefully slide down your bundle. This is all the consciousnesses that are wrapped around you, supporting you, holding you. Feel the strength as they engage, as you engage them consciously and with intention. You're interplaying now. 
as you ride that greater cable down. Come all the way down until you feel that cable beginning to open and expand again. Take note of the strand that is you dropping down into the physicality to express, to be the driver, coalescing the vehicle around it, and begin to observe the other strands as some also drop into physicality. Maybe they're people you know, animals around you, the tree in your backyard that called you to buy that house, the river that you swim in. Allow them to show you all the things they have created around you to support your world, your creation. Some of them remain as consciousnesses only, not expressing in the physical world. Allow them to show you what you're ready to see about them as well. What you're ready to experience as you allow them to take seat around you in the oasis you're sitting within. Allow and invite them to come to you now in a great big collective group hug, an entourage hug, <laughs> and feel their, their support. You can feel it physically as they energetically surround you with their love, their gratitude, their joy, their awe and wonder at you as they witness your life. Good. Now we're going to ask from a download, for a download from Source, from our entourage, of all we are ready to receive in this moment, in this time, that is optimum in supporting us and in coming into alignment with the life we came here to create and to live. Let's just allow that download to come fully in.
remember to allow your body to move and adjust itself. Just releasing. Now don't try to hold on to the information or interpret it or decide what it means. This isn't the time for that. This is the time to just receive and know that these adjustments and alignments will begin to show themselves to you through your creation. The job now is to just observe, witness, and participate as you feel highest guided that feels true and right. As you come back into the here and the now, I want you to first take a moment feeling the body in this very neutral state, fully calmed, probably not even feeling any aches or pains. Just take a quick scan of the body. Some areas are showing themselves wanting to be moved. Do so until you do feel at that state of neutrality. And we're going to use the compass again. For those of you who've never used it before, this is an orientation. For those of you who have, this is a strengthening. Okay. So now I want you to ask your body, your physical vessel that we're calling back into focus as we return from that state of consciousness released from the body. We're asking the body to show us what a yes feels like. For me, it's a tightening of all the muscles around the top of my head. A high yes will even pull my head to the side. And ask the body, what does a no feel like? For me, a no is nothing. And a really big no is a tightening of the jaw, a heaviness there. Ask the body again, show me a yes. Now ask the body, show me a high yes. And a no. Coming back into that high, yes. I want you to use your compass in this moment to ask a question. Was I able to receive all I needed in this moment and time from this meditation? If you got no, go back and listen to the meditation again. And if you're not sure if you should, ask, would I benefit from listening to this meditation again? Now ask, should I, would I benefit more from listening to it right away? No, for me. In a few days, yes. Get curious. Ask lots of questions. Learn with this tool or whatever other guidance tool you have. I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of time, about three minutes, four minutes, to just start asking some questions using this compass. What have you been wanting to know most? What have you been afraid to ask someone else? Try to avoid words like should I, shouldn't I, and
instead say things along the lines of, will this put me more in alignment with my highest self? Will this put me more in alignment with my life? Does this pull me out of alignment? Is this a deconstruction that's necessary? Is this a building that's necessary? Growth or development? Use those kind of words if you can. Take note of the judgment that you're using when you ask these questions. This is how you begin to really know the difference between the higher self and the conscious self. So I'm going to give you that time while I hold space for you all. So go ahead and inquire. I'm getting that many of you have started to come to the close of that strand of questions that you had. If you have more and you want to continue, go ahead and turn off the oasis and go and do your inquiry. With this last little bit of time that we have, I want you guys to come back into the here, the now. Start to put your roots down as you ground into the present as you ground through the body, coming more and more into the here and the now, coming fully forward as you bring your consciousness into now. I wanted to take this time to give you one other tool, show you how I use one other tool when you can't get yeses and noes, when you can't trust them, when you can't feel like when you need you need an outside source or information. One of the things that I use is a pendulum. <clears throat> this is a pendulum that was made by Shauna. This is a chakra pendulum. I love it. It loves me. We're happy. We love each other. 
And the pendulums, you may not have a pendulum that'll swing as quickly as mine does. And uh, that's because I've used them a lot and uh, this was a big part of my training. But I wanted to show you guys just another tool that you can use. Now, I'm gonna try to hold my hand as still as possible, but I can tell you right now, I'm not making this move, right? And so for those of you who've used pendulums, you know what that's like. It's already starting to kind of slow down as it, a little bit, <laughs> as it's uh, listening to me and receiving me. Now, when you're using a pendulum, you also, again, start with yeses and noes. Show me a yes. Show me a no. See how it's transitioned to now it's only really going side to side. So for me, this is what a yes and a no is. Remember, it's always going to be different. Just like energetically, your yeses and noes felt very, very different. When you get more and more attuned to asking yeses and noes, you can use these tools as ways of for so much more than just yes and no. This right now is what I like to call the truth, the truth mode. When I'm speaking truth, the pendulum is circling in, yes, 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 that's right, that's right. The more into the truth I get, the faster it circles. When I start to tell a lie or tell something that's inaccurate or off point, the pendulum shifts. See how it's now, no, no. It's showing you this lie detection mode. So sometimes when I'm really just like, oh God, I want to have to stop asking yes and no, but I want to understand what I'm thinking. Am I on the right track? Can I trust this information? Can I follow it through? And then I start to tell myself the story and it gives me the yes as long as I'm going on target and the no if I'm not. <laughs> But it also does things like, what happens, show me when I'm only getting half of the story. See how it cuts down the middle and it circles. It's making, if you could see it from below, a hemisphere. And it's actually also showing now skirting the issue, circling around a center point, but not actually in a full arcing circle. It's drawing little concentric circles around the main point. There's all kinds of ways that your tools can talk to you. So if you're one who doesn't trust your compass, try playing with a pendulum. You can also use muscle testing. Okay, this is another way. So <clears throat> and it started as you would use two people and you'd hold your arm out. And you try to hold it as hard as you could and somebody would try pushing on your arm. And the concept there is if you're telling truth, the body holds. If you're not, the body can't. It can't hold in a lie. So there's no energy flowing. So if it's not true, then someone can push your arm down. That takes somebody else. You can do the same thing with your finger. This was what my former teacher used to use. So she would hold this finger firm and ask the question. And if it was a yes, the finger doesn't go down. A no, the finger goes down. So... For instance, do I like chocolate? Yes. Is it my favorite food? No, I didn't know that. So you can play with it that way. One other aspect that I want to bring into focus, and the reason that I chose these three different methods that I wanted to share with you of ways of getting confirmations, is because there's degree of confirmation as well. When we first were using the compass, I asked you to feel a yes and then a high yes. You notice the degree of confirmation because sometimes we're on the right track, we've got the right strand, but we aren't seeing it clearly yet. It's not the highest of yeses. So make sure as you're doing these inquiries, you're moving forward just because you get a yeah, it may not mean that that's all of it. And so make those, make note of those. What is the high yes? What is the maybe? And what is the no? Right? Use all of these tools together as you're trying to learn 
and grow and communicate more and more with your highest of selves. Because what happens, no matter what tool you're using, the compass, the pendulum, muscle testing, whatever tool you're using, you will find that eventually you get on a string of questions that the answers are all yes, yes, yes. And then you get to that high yes and you're in the flow. And it just starts to stream through you the information and the awareness. So that's really the goal. It's not to master the pendulum. It's not to master muscle testing. It's not to master the compass. It's to master the flow, getting into the flow so that you can allow that information to come through. Okay? So tomorrow we'll talk about what blocks us from our flow and how we can confuse ourselves with this information when we go on a quest for yeses and noes. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. It's one, it's 1101. It feels like the perfect time to close. I love you all and I'll see you tomorrow.